365 days, 365 messages God has in store for you in each day. Great is our God, written by Fernando Zavala. Come, join us. Let's see what God has in store for you. Hello, friend. We're glad that you're here today for the devotional title, So How Are We Going to Live? Today is April 5th, 2022. Please join me for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you because you love us and because you want us to draw closer to you. Help us to listen to your word today and to become closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is found in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 13. And it says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Is there any person in this world for whom you would gladly die so that person could live? A story that comes to us from the days of the Second World War tells us that's what's precisely what Maximilian Kolbe, a prisoner priest at Auschwitz, did. You probably already know the story. It says that one day a prisoner escaped. When that happened, the custom was to choose 10 prisoners who would be killed. After the victims had been chosen, one of them, a Polish prisoner named Francis, began to cry, sobbing. He shouted, For God's sake, I have a wife and children. When Maximilian saw his friend cry like that, he asked permission to speak to the officer in charge of the execution. What do you want? asked the soldier, as he pointed his gun at him. I want to die instead of him, he said, pointing at his friend. I'm already old, and I don't have a wife or children. On August 14, 1941, Maximilian Kolbe died, so his friend Francis Konowski could live. As today's text says, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. I have read that as long as he lived, every August 14, Francis would travel to Auschwitz to pay tribute to the memory of the man who had died in his place and placed a plaque in the yard of his house that he himself had carved as a reminder of what it undoubtedly the greatest sacrifice that one human being could make for another. Of course, more important than the trips to Auschwitz and the plaque is the kind of life this man led, aware that he lived because another preferred to die for him. Did Franchkes live in a noble and dignified manner until the day of his death? I do not know how Franchkes lived during those 44 years. Colby died in 1941 and Franchkes died in 1995. Nor is it our business. What is our business is that the Son of God died between two criminals. Jesus suffered all kinds of abuse and humiliation for you and me, even though he never did anything wrong to deserve such mistreatment. What kind of life do we lead? Are we living to please our whims and appetites or to honor the name of the one who shed his precious blood on a cross out of love for you and me? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, please help us to never lose sight of the fact that it's thanks to the death of your Son that we live today and that it's thanks to him that we have hope for an eternal life. Please prepare us to live in a way that glorifies his holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're glad that you joined us for the devotional. We pray that God blesses you, that his love embraces you, and may today we live in a way that honors the sacrifice that Jesus paid for you and me. Have a blessed day. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.